I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Tim Cyclesman Wood, editor of Cycles News and Views on Cyclesman.com. Happy New Year and welcome back to the show, Tim. Jim, thank you and Happy New Year to you too. So many people have been asking me, do they expect or do we expect the major stock markets to take a big dip early in the year? Well, I do have <clears throat> some uh, intermediate degree cycle lows coming up um, ahead of us. So, e yeah, I think there's going to be a dip into those cyclical lows coming up. Uh, no question about that. Um, what that yields structurally, you know, that remains to be seen. You know, does it trigger a Dow Theory primary bearish trend change, or does it not? Um, does it uh, uh, break some of the structural, um, positive structural stuff that is currently still in place, or does it not? Don't know. That's going to be the test. But there is an intermediate, uh, some intermediate, a clustering of intermediate degree lows coming to you. Um, as far as the overall rally, you know, I maintain, look, I make no bones about it. This thing is stretched farther, you know, same story there, stretched farther than, 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 than imaginable. Um, we never seen anything like this. I, I, I never dreamed it was going to do this, but it's still the same bubble. And, um, once we get, you know, the, the setup in place with the markers again, you know, they were lost, but once they're back in place, um, you bet it's going to be uh, an, another very dangerous situation. Um, I think that the bubble w will burst um, eventually once this, but the, but the setup has to be in place. I mean, it can't happen until that happens. But then I do think that it's going to happen, and I really think that our boy Trump is going to be the patsy. That's, I, I think, the handwriting's on the wall there. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I think the monetary policy, and I'm not trying to, you know, pick sides here. I mean, it doesn't matter if Elmer Fudd was elected as president. You know, the the person in the seat or about to be in the seat has inherited this bubble. And the monetary policy of not only the last eight years, but really the last 16 years. Because we've talked about how the natural top in the market occurred. In 2000, I mean, you can look at that with the economic uh, indicators. You look at that with volume characteristics. We've covered that. I can cover it again if you want. You know, looking at the velocity of money peaked in 2000, looking at job participation rate, which Trump talks about, by the way. You know, it peaked in 2000. The velocity of money. I mean, the uh, excuse me, the uh, volume characteristics. They changed from bullish to bearish. Uh, undeniable uh, in 2000, and so. You know, the bubble that has been generated by the last 16 years and, and more recently out of the 2009 low, this last administration, um, the piper has to be paid. And I just don't see how it can continue to be pushed and pushed and pushed. And honestly, I don't think that this administration, the new administration, is probably going to do that. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I just believe that... that in, in, in the end, he's going to be the blame, and, and I'm not trying to defend him or, or anything like that. I'm just saying it doesn't matter who was elected. I, I feel like that, you know, at some point it just gets um, so extended that it, it's inevitably, inevitably going to pop. Does it help that uh, the president-elect is uh, really talking about protectionism? If anybody talks about uh, building a plant in Mexico, they're going to face extra duties and taxes bringing that product back into the states. 
You know, I guess that's a matter of one's philosophy. And, you know, I have to side with, with that philosophy, personally. You know, I, I, you know, I don't like to talk about the politics, really, but, you know, the American corporation is so regulated, so taxed, and, and, and so burdened that it is hard to do business in this country. And I think that needs to stop. And, you know, if, if it were, if it were easier to do business in this country, then a lot of that would take care of itself. But absolutely, you know, the tax burden on, um, businesses in the U.S., regulation, it, it needs to be, um, it needs to be addressed. Something needs to be done with that. And if, and, and if companies, you know, the, I don't think necessarily the way to address it is to, to just try to impose tariffs on, on companies that have gone abroad to escape all that craziness, but it needs to be addressed within the country. And for example, I stopped in a little store that opened up just down the road from my house and they had a meat market on the side. And I said, um, so can you, y'all gonna have a, you gonna put a place in where you can come in and have a sandwich and have lunch and sit here and eat? They said, no, we can't. I'm like, what? You know, it's a convenience store. They sell wine on one side, you know, neat little place. And then they have this, this, this meat market with, with, uh, you know, the, uh, range fed cattle, beef and all this kind of stuff. Really nice little place. And they, you can't sell wine. And he said, well, we don't, I don't know. And so I kept asking questions, and what it was was they didn't have the right bathroom, and the county wouldn't let them do it. Didn't have the right bathroom. They only had one bathroom. I mean, that is just ridiculous. And, and, and that kind of stupidity is what has to stop. Deregulation is a lot of people afraid that the U.S. won't look after water or air quality anymore, but it's not that kind of deregulation, is it? Of course not, or it shouldn't be, you know. Deregulation, I think, is let the marketplace be the marketplace. Um, don't stifle business. Let let it let it go. Let people do their thing. We'll have more with Tim Wood right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Tim Wood. Tim, what do you see happening in the gold market in the new year? Well, I still think there's going to be one more push down. You know, I have said ever since the 2011 nine-year cycle top that it we had the nine-year cycle top and that we should look to sometime in late 16 to 17 time frame for the nine-year low. Well, we had a low in uh, December of 15. That wasn't it or should not have been it. It was too short. There should be one more push down, and it should be underway. Uh, in the short term, we do have a, a short-term bounce, uh, uh, you know, underway in gold. But I think it's another counter-trend advance, and uh, we should have one more push down into the next couple of months, uh, ideally. And um, once we get the nine-year cycle low in place, then I think gold is going to be on a solid foundation to move higher for um, you know the next several years, I think the, the longer term trend will definitely reverse with that nine year cycle low. Um, as we approach the clustering of of cycle lows, um, we'll be able to zero in on that low, and I'll be covering it in the in the research letters and, and updates as we as we approach that low. But I I I, I see no reason not to think that um, there's going to be a, a pretty decent opportunity with a brand new advancing nine-year cycle in gold, and that's going to be very positive for not just gold, but, but should be positive for the gold stocks as well. The U.S. dollar still seems to be on a tear. In Hong Kong overnight, the LIBOR rate went up 30. It was at 30%, they say, because of a shortage of U.S. dollars. How is the U.S. dollar going to do in 2017? 
Well, the dollar, it, you know, there's no question. Right now, the dollar short, intermediate term, it, it's, uh, it's it's positive. Um, intermediate term, we should be at or near an, uh, an intermediate degree top, uh, and there's a clustering of cycle lows coming due there as well into the, you know, the first couple months of, of, of the new year. Um, longer term, there's a, a, a four-year cycle in the dollar, and I have no indication at this point that the four-year cycle has peaked. But I do have um, a clustering of intermediate degree cycles that sh that are due now. And so the dollar, what we should see is some weakness into um, the next couple of months, ideally. I mean, the thing is holding on. It, it has been very strong, but it hasn't succumbed to, to, to the, you know, the cyclical downturn that's due is what I'm trying to say, but I, it will, I think. I don't, I, you know, you can't avoid the cycle forever. But uh, I do see some intermediate degree lows in the next couple of months and then, um, you know, take it from there. But uh, at this time, the four-year cycle is still positive longer term. Oil has stayed above $50 for quite some time now. Do you expect it to stay there? No. You know, the same thing with oil. Um, you know, oil has been more positive than than I anticipated. You know, I have said that I thought there was a trip back down to retest the, the lows that we saw last year, and I still believe that. There is uh, a clustering of intermediate degree cycles due now there as well. The fact that it has not given given way to those cycles is a very positive sign. I do think that there is a retest and a, um, a correction due in the next few months, and then, um, you know, uh, from there, yes, it's up again. But um, originally I questioned uh, and, and kind of thought that we may see the February low of last year um, violated and maybe not in a big way, but like a retest to, to build a base. And and now I'm, I'm not so sure that we – I don't think we're going to see that. Actually, the structure tells me that we shouldn't see that violated. We should just see a correction and then um, – crude oil will be set to move higher, I believe. Tim, uh, when we're looking at other commodities, uh, any outlooks for, say, uh, soybeans or, or other consumables like that? I need to look at them closer. Maybe I can do that for the next next interview. Um, I, I gave them, you know, just a quick look a, a while back, and, and I, you know, I, I, I did see some positive tendencies let me look at that, do some analysis, and maybe we can cover that um, in the next, um, you know, in the next interview. But, but just in general, let me say this: I do believe that we have had in 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 uh, commodities. There's a three-year cycle that's dominant, and I do believe that we saw that three-year cycle low back in, um, you know, January, February, December, depending on exactly which um, commodity you're looking at. And, and, you know, that's when, when, uh, gold made its last low and oil made its last low. There was a clustering of cycle lows due there and a lot of commodities bottomed at that point as well. And so that said, with, with, uh, the CRB index, there is a three year cycle which bottomed in conjunction with that low. And so until I see evidence that that three year cycle advance has peaked, which I do not at this point, then um, that cycle is still positive, and, and, and you have to view any weakness as corrective and that the resumption of the uptrend will continue. And so that being said, we should see the correction into, you know, some intermediate degree lows there, and then it's going to be set to move higher. What and how the individual markets in the CRB index or complex as a whole behave as we come out of those intermediate term um, lows will be telling. But I do see, um, you know, some short-term weakness into those lows and then higher prices in commodities in general, yes. Tim, because we may have a lot of new listeners in the new year, can you tell us a little bit about Cycles News and Views? Sure. Um, I have been doing, the, the you know, the Cycles News and Views, the research letter, for, I guess, 15 years now. 
and uh, it's a technical based letter. It's based on cycles, which is nothing more. It sounds, you know, to someone that may be new to technical analysis or this sort of thing, it may sound kind of hokey, but but you know, a cycle is nothing more than than trend quantification. You know, things move up, things move down, and they they move, they ebb and flow to a rhythm. Um, that rhythm, you know, it can ex expand and contract slightly, but you know, there is a rhythm there, and you have you know ways of 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 quantifying what should happen, and and so based on those quantifications, you can come up with expectations, and then of course you have indicators to help you determine if a cycle is actually topped or bottomed in accordance with those expectations. You kind of work in some ends to the middle. And then as far as the market, the, when I say market equities, you know, I also um, do Dow Theory work. Uh, Richard Russell helped me obtain some of the original writings from our Dow Theory founding fathers. I've gone through that material and, and uh, incorporated that with the cycles work. is pretty fascinating. Um, I was able to call the 2000 top, identified it um, you know, timely, and uh, said that we would move below the 98 low, which we did. And then uh, the next big call was um, the 2007 uh, top. You know, I said that there was an extended four-year cycle, and that the more it extended, the worse the outcome would be. And that top was also easy. Um, we had a high, I believe it was in June, July, with a decline into August, and I remember standing on the doorsteps of a computer place and people calling and saying, is this the top? I said, no, we need one more push because of the DNA markers. We got it in October, and bada bing, bada boom, market fell. And so that call was easy. Um, the call with the nine-year cycle low, in, or excuse me, the nine-year cycle top in gold in 11, that call was easy. Commodities in 2008 was easy. I admit this call with this market, with this bubble that we're dealing with with equities, pardon my frankness, but it has been a bitch. And I think the reason for that is, and I'm not making excuses, because we see the cycles ebb and flow, we see the Dow Theory stuff that fell into place, but then it would it would morph and blow out. And I think that the reason for that has been the enormous amount of manipulation and um, interference, but they will not get away with it, and that's what I'm saying. We will see. We still see the cycles ebb and flow, and we will see the DNA markers reappear. And the advantage is of knowing that is that when they are there, then you know you're in the minefield. You know there's mines there, and you know you know the environment in which you're operating. But this bubble has become so i don't know how to say this so um we we we've seen it for so long now let me say it that way that it feels normal it feels normal and it it reminds me of crude oil when crude oil was you know it stayed over 100 went to what 140 or whatever the the number was and i i told people i made the same analogy as i talk about this i remembered i said you know what it's been so high so long, the abnormal begins to feel normal. And I said, it's not normal. And, you know, I kept kept saying it and made the call to the week with my friend John Grant on the air with the call in crude oil in 2008. And, Tim, Timer's Digest has put you at the top for picking gold correctly for quite some time, haven't they? Yes, they have. Uh, actually, I have been named uh, number one gold timer for the last 52 weeks in 2016. Was also number one gold timer, um, named number one gold timer in 2013 and 2015, I believe, by uh, Timer's Digest. Absolutely. But my point is that when something becomes so abnormal for so long, it begins to feel normal. And that's where we are with equities. So my position longer term with equities has not changed. And, you know, we still see that the cycles are still relevant. Dow theory is still relevant. It's just that it has it has not stuck. The opportunity will appear, and then it won't. And then it's there, and then it's not. And so I think that we will see um, another setup. And when we do, 
inevitably the bubble will burst and it's going to be just as painful as the decline in crude oil was. Tim, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Tim Cyclesman Wood, editor of Cycles News and Views on Cyclesman.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of How Street Media Incorporated. Symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Tim Wood. Tim, what do you see happening in the gold market in the new year? Well, I still think there's going to be one more push down. You know, I've have said ever since the 2011 nine year cycle top that it, we had the nine year cycle top and that we should look to sometime in late 16 to 17 time frame for the nine year low. Well, we had a low in uh, December of 15. That wasn't it or should not have been it. It was too short. There should be one more push down, and it should be underway. Uh, in the short term, we do have a, a short-term bounce, uh, uh, you know, underway in gold. But I think it's another counter-trend advance, and uh, we should have one more push down into the next couple of months, uh, ideally. And... Um, once we get the nine-year cycle low in place, then I think gold is going to be on a solid foundation to move higher for, um, you know, the next several years. I think the, the longer-term trend will definitely reverse with that nine-year cycle low. Um, as we approach the clustering of, of cycle lows, um, we'll be able to zero in on that low, and I'll be covering it in the, in the research letters and, and updates as we as we approach that low. But I... I, I, I see no reason not to think that um, there's going to be a, a pretty decent opportunity with a brand new advancing nine-year cycle in gold, and that's going to be very positive for not just gold, but but should be positive for the gold stocks as well. The U.S. dollar still seems to be on a tear in Hong Kong overnight. The LIBOR rate went up thirty; it was at thirty percent. They say because of a shortage of U.S. dollars. How is the U.S. dollar going to do in 20? I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Tim Cyclesman Wood, editor of Cycles News and Views on Cyclesman.com. Happy New Year and welcome back to the show, Tim. Jim, thank you and Happy New Year to you too. So many people have been asking me, do they expect or do we expect the major stock markets to take a big dip early in the year? Well, I do have <clears throat> some uh, intermediate degree cycle lows coming up um, ahead of us. So, e yeah, I think there's going to be a dip into those cyclical lows coming up. Uh, no question about that. Um, what that yields structurally, you know, that remains to be seen. You know, does it trigger a Dow Theory primary bearish trend change, or does it not? Um, does it uh, uh, break some of the structural, um, positive structural stuff that is currently still in place, or does it not? Don't know. 
that's going to be the test. But there is an intermediate, uh, some intermediate, a clustering of intermediate degree lows coming to you. Um, as far as the, oh, you know, the, I don't think necessarily the way to address it is to to just try to impose tariffs on on companies that have gone abroad to escape all that craziness. But it needs to be addressed within the country. And for example, I stopped in a little store that opened up just down the road from my house, and they had a meat market on the side. And I said, um, "So can you y'all going to have a you going to put a place in where you can come in and have a sandwich and have lunch and sit here and eat?" And they said, "No, we can't." I'm like, "What? You know, it's a convenience store." They sell wine on one side, you know, neat little place, and then they have this 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 meat market with with uh, you know the uh, range fed cattle, beef, and all this kind of stuff. Really nice little place, and they you can't sell wine. And he said, "Well, we don't. I don't know." And so I kept asking questions, and what it was was they didn't have the right bathroom, and the county wouldn't let them do it. Didn't have the right bathroom. They only had one bathroom. I mean, that is it, just ridiculous. And, and and that kind of stupidity is what has to stop. Deregulation is a lot of people afraid that the U.S. won't look after water or air quality anymore, but it's not that kind of deregulation, is it? Of course not, or it shouldn't be, you know. Deregulation, I think, is let the marketplace be the marketplace. Um, don't stifle business. Let, let, it, let it go. Let people do their thing. We'll have more with Tim Wood right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange. We're all rally. <clears throat> you know, I maintain, look, I make no bones about it. This thing is stretched farther, you know, same story there, stretched farther than, 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 than imaginable. Um, we never seen anything like this. I, I, I never dreamed it was going to do this, but it's still the same bubble. And, um, once we get, you know, the, the setup in place with the markers again, you know, they were lost, but once they're back in place, um, you bet it's going to be, uh, an, another very dangerous situation. Um, I think that the bubble, w- Will burst um, eventually once this, but the, but the, the setup has to be in place. I mean, it can't happen until that happens. But then I do think that it's going to happen, and I really think that our boy Trump is going to be the patsy. That's I I think the handwriting's on the wall there. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, <clears throat> I think the monetary policy, and I'm not trying to you know, pick sides here. I mean, it doesn't matter if Elmer Fudd was elected as president. You know, the the person in the seat or about to be in the seat has inherited this bubble. And the monetary policy of not only the last eight years, but really the last 16 years. Because we've talked about how the natural top in the market occurred in 2000. I mean, you can look at that with the economic uh, indicators. You look at that with volume characteristics. We've covered that. I can cover it again if you want. You know, looking at the velocity of money peaked in 2000, looking at job participation rate, which Trump talks about, by the way. You know, it peaked in 2000. The velocity of money, I mean, the uh, excuse me, the uh, volume characteristics, they changed from bullish to bearish, uh, undeniable uh, in 2000. And so... You know, the bubble that has been generated by the last 16 years and, and more recently out of the 2009 low, this last administration, um, the piper has to be paid. And I just don't see how it can continue to be pushed and pushed and pushed. And honestly, I don't think that this administration, the new administration, is probably going to do that. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I just believe that... that in, in the end, he's going to be the blame, and, and I'm not trying to defend him or, or anything like that. I'm just saying it doesn't matter who was elected. I, I feel like that, you know, at some point it just gets um, so extended that it, it's inevitably, inevitably going to pop. Does it help that uh, the president-elect 
is uh, really talking about protectionism. If anybody talks about uh, building a plant in Mexico, they're going to face extra duties and taxes bringing that product back into the States. You know, I guess that's a matter of one's philosophy. And, you know, I have to side with with that philosophy personally. You know, I, I, you know, I don't like to talk about the politics really, but, you know, the American corporation is so regulated, so taxed, and, and, and so burdened that it is hard to do business in this country. And I think that needs to stop. And you know, if if it were if it were easier to do business in this country, then a lot of that would take care of itself. But absolutely, you know, the tax burden on um, businesses in the U.S. regulation it, it needs to be um, it needs to be addressed. Something needs to be done with that. And if and and if company 